Yep, look what I did. I burned it. But that's okay. That's the back. <laughs> now, I use Art Coat instead of Quick Coat by Stone Coner Countertops. Ha! <laughs> by Stone Coat Countertops. I'm Rebecca, the Frugal Resinista. I'm the mom of five amazing little kids, but I discovered a couple years ago that I needed something that was just for me, so I tried resin painting, and I fell in love with it. But I quickly discovered that being a resin artist was really expensive. So I started exploring ways that I could create beautiful art but do it on a budget. Once I discovered that that was possible, my new goal became to teach other people how to do the same thing so that resin art could be accessible for anyone. I believe that there's an artist in all of us and we just need the opportunity to discover it in ourselves. Thank you for joining me on my art journey and I hope that you create your own art as well as you learn from my videos. Remember, no matter what your final product looks like, your art is beautiful because you created it with your own hands. Ooh, it's on fire. Rebecca the Frugal Resinista here. If you have been wondering where I have been the past week, here is the mess that I have all over the place that I've been working on. Oh my goodness, I'm doing stained glass, I'm doing resin jewelry, it's all a hot mess. But I am about to teach you guys in this tutorial how to, let me come over here, how to make these cabochons that have real dried flowers in them. I know there are a lot of tutorials on that, but I am actually going to start you from picking a flower to the best way to dry it, to keep the shape and the color, to putting it in resin, and to turning it into a piece of jewelry. So, we will get started. First thing I want to show you about doing your flower drying is I found this Activa brand flower drying silica gel, and it is great stuff. So, what it does is you just pour it all the way around your flowers and it sucks the moisture out. Now, each step of this I have tested over the course of this week and I will tell you what works and doesn't work. In the directions for this, it says that you can put it in the microwave and instantly dry your flowers. That does work, but it really kind of destroys the color. So what I've done instead is I took an old uh, just Tupperware bucket that I had here and I put it in and instead of doing it quickly in the microwave, I let everything sit for five days to a week. And then from there, I take it out and I've maintained the shape and maintained the color. And I haven't burned them in the microwave. So I've got stuff going in here right now. And what I do to put it in is I, with the shape of the flower, all you have to do is shake this back and forth and your flowers will show up. With the shape of the flower, so this little daisy for example, I put it in facing up because that's the shape of it and it's going to hold more of the silica gel and then I just fill it in with more. And the reason I do that is that it gets into every little crack and crevice. So these aren't done. I'm going to cover it back up. <laughs> but Doing it that way maintains the shape of the flower, but also makes sure that it dries all the way through. And if you don't have these completely dried, you will not end up with good color or anything. Oop, see, I just uncovered another flower. That's the one problem with these. I keep forgetting what I've put in here already. <laughs> but anyway, so I've got that going in there. That's the section that's still drying right now. Now, I had bought some of these dried flowers on Amazon before I started making my own and you can absolutely do that as well that came from that too so I'll link you to those because they did send me a good variety so that'll be in the description box but they come flat so what I did was my daughter and I took a few different walks and we picked wildflowers and we got a ton of them my daughter likes the dandelions I wasn't sold on that at first but they actually turned out really cute in one of the necklace little cabochons that I made but all of these are already dried but see how they have maintained their shape Especially these, I was really surprised that these maintain their shape completely, but they're completely dry, so they're ready to go into resin. So that is what happened when I left them for a week in the silica gel. So from there, I'm going to show you guys how to actually put them in the resin so that you get a 3D effect, like 
like this right here. I've got multiple pours in these. These do take a while because you want to do your top flower first and then go from there. Sorry, I'm not focusing real well here. But I'm going to show you now how I pour these. All right, I'm not used to zooming myself in quite this much, so I hope you guys can see okay. And um, <laughs> I'm not great working in miniature because I get impatient, but these turn out so cool, so I'm going to do it again. So I have a couple different things to show you. This first mold, this is such a cool mold. I found this at Michael's and it was only $4.99 and I used my 40% off coupon. And it's a candy mold in the candy section. And it just was perfect for these. It looks like kind of a cool jewel. I know I'm having trouble focusing my camera. I don't know, it just was like the perfect thing to put these flowers in. And so I'm going to use that, and then I'm also going to use a couple other things I got at Michael's that I'll show you after I do this part. So one of the hardest parts for me with all of this has been that I am used to mixing a ton of resin, and I keep mixing too much resin, and then I end up needing to pour like 50 of these at once, and I don't have the patience. <laughs> so what I've been trying to do is, as I finish other projects, when there's clear left, just do a few of these. But what I'm going to do first is add just a tiny bit of resin to each space. And you don't want to fill these all the way on your first go with the flowers because when you put flowers in, they float. And so you do want to coat them all the way with your resin just to make sure that they're covered. But you don't want to fill the thing the whole way and put all your flowers in at the same time because they will all float to the top. And especially on this, since the top of these is really the back, we don't want everything floating all the way up to the back of it. So I'm not going to do all of these today. I'm going to do just a few and show you some different techniques. But let me get this in here. So you can do the actual design of this any way you want to. I have discovered that I kind of like to make a focal point. So I'll do one big flower or a couple flowers right in the front, in the middle, and then from there I will move on to adding more other details in the background. And so I'm just going to do that with a few of these. Now I'm going to speed this up a little bit because you guys aren't going to want to watch me fiddle around with this, but just one quick note as I do this. If I use a flower, like this one for instance, what I want to do is take a tiny bit of my resin and go ahead and drip it into the hole because if you are going to put this face down, you're going to end up with bubbles all over the place sitting in in your resin when you go like this. So you want to do something like that where you get some resin down in there. The other thing is you want to make sure you hit these once and go ahead and pop your bubbles with your blowtorch so that you can so that you can end up without having, so that you can have your bubbles popped. Now, I just stuck this in and I'm going to push it down. These do move around. I'm going to push it down in here. And then I just want to make sure it's coated all the way. And then I'm just going to let this cure all the way. And then I will start layering things in the back. The other thing that I do is, Obviously the whole stem is sticking up. I don't care about that yet because it makes it easier to put it in there. Once this part has cured, I can just clip it off, but I'm leaving it for now so that it's easier to put things in. So I'm going to just pick a few of these different ones and stick them in. And then from there, I will show you guys what I do next. Amazon, they actually surprised me. They sent some really nice ones. They're just flat, so you kind of have to decide what look you're going for. Now, you can either put your whole flower in if it's a little too big for the mold and just kind of stuff it in. That's what I'm going to do in this case and kind of push down from the middle and go outward so that you know you don't have any bubbles underneath your flower. This is all stuff I've tested over the course of the week. <laughs> um, and just again coat it but you can also if you have one that's way too big but you think it would look neat is cut it 
Um, and I did that here. I just cut down one side and I liked that it wasn't centered and I've been trying to center some of them and not center some of them just to give different looks to the designs. So that one I cut so that you could see all of it on one side. So there are just a lot of different fun options with this. All right. I'm going to make sure that one's coated all the way. Now, I use Art Coat instead of Quick Coat by Stone Coner Countertops. Ha! <laughs> by Stone Coat Countertops for this because, well, for two reasons. One, I think it dries a little more clear than the Quick Coat does, but also I need time for a lot of these bubbles to come up to the surface and pop on their own because I can torch these once real quick, but I cannot burn my flowers. So I just need that to happen on its own. Another cool thing with using these flowers that have not flattened is that you'll kind of flatten them as you move them in the resin, but as they float and move around, they do pop back out. So you will still get the 3D full effect of them inside the resin. All right, I'm gonna let those sit for a little bit. I'm not gonna torch them yet because I want as many bubbles to come up on their own as possible. And I'm gonna show you guys the next thing. All right, you guys, I let what I just poured cure overnight so that you guys could see the next step. I added a few things. I'll tell you what I added. I went ahead and stuck some lilac in one of these because I had a little resin left and I wanted to see how those turned out. And I'm going to show you guys how I do this next part. I did some of them already to show you step two, but I'll also show you step one. And then I'm going to show you what I do with these that you have to fill in. So the first thing I'm going to do with, with all these extra little flowers I did and then the ones in here, I'm just going to cut the stems off so they're out of the way now that this is cured. Now remember with these molds, what is on the bottom is what you'll see the most of. So I just need to add little extra details in the backs of all of these to kind of fill out the look. And then let me show you guys this real quick. I bought these. It was a pack for $4.99 for these four at Michael's and I use my 40% off coupon and all I do is I use some of my painters tape and I stick these down really hard and I kind of rub them around against the desk so that I know that they're on there really well and then I pour resin right into them and do my flowers and everything. Now with these I work from the back forward so what you're seeing is actually the front. So when this was stuck down I'm working on the front. These still need more resin. I have to dome them still, but the first part is cured, so I'm going to add more to them. And I will start one with this and show you guys how I do that. So let's get going. I'm going to speed this up. I'm going to start by just adding extra flowers behind what's already there, and from there, I'll talk you through some new things.
those done for now and I think they're gonna look really neat. I really packed flowers into a few of these so I have a feeling when they're done they're gonna look just really cool so I'm excited about those. So now I'm gonna show you guys a little more about these. I'm gonna go ahead and peel these off. I'll show you how easy they are to peel off. They're a tiny bit, whoops, they're a tiny bit sticky. The resin to the tape when you first pull them off and so I kind of try to pull them slowly but they still come off pretty easily and the one thing that I do with these because putting the tape on the back makes them a little cloudy I don't know how well you can tell but obviously I have a matte finish on the back of this versus the shine here is I will take a little paintbrush when I'm done and paint the backs of these so there are two reasons for that the first is I want it to be shiny so when you hold it up to the light, the clear is completely clear and see-through. But also, I, I'm sure some of you guys experience this too, I'm allergic to metal unless it's like the really nice gold or sterling or whatever. And so when I just do that thin paint painted layer of resin on the back, I coat that metal edge as well. And then I don't have to worry about the metal touching my skin and irritating my skin. So for the next part of these, when I add the next layers, I don't need them on the tape anymore. And when I don't need something on the tape, I go ahead and take it off because I just happen to accidentally stick my fingers to the tape all the time and it drives me crazy. But I'm going to fold this over and I'm going to go ahead and do this last one on the tape so we can pour the first layer. And I just basically go like this. I push down as hard as I can and then I come around to the back and just press it extra just to make sure all the way around it's really stuck down well. And then it's ready for me to pour into. There's not much to it. You just want to make sure you don't have wrinkles inside your circle. And I will say, because these are inexpensive, this one and this one, the bigger ones, both were bent just the tiniest bit, which obviously resin can fall under. But if you just kind of wiggle it, it still held, obviously held my resin in fine. So these are going to get their second layer. This one, I was going to put a bunch of stuff in front, but I just think this is pretty. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do any more in this other than I want to dome the resin. So you can take any sandpaper you want. I had my Dremel tool out doing something else. and I was going to get rid of this um, sanding bit. So as much as it sounds terrible to do this, I'm going to gouge up my resin a little bit because this will let the new layer I pour on stick to it without them peeling apart. So this one I don't have to worry about because I've got different like bumps and grooves in it from the flowers sticking up so I'm okay to go ahead and just pour in those. One other note that's nice about these, it's probably almost impossible to see from the video, but there is a tiny little inner lip in these in the middle that sticks out just a little farther than the rest of it and that actually makes it so that your resin is not just a solid disc that you could potentially pop on through. That little lip in there keeps it so that your resin stays put. So I'm going to just dome this one real quick because already it's like, oh gosh, look how it looks. Um, and then I'm going to add my other, my focal flowers to this. I had to do these backwards, so these are the background colors. I'm going to add a focal point and then I'll show you guys this one. All right, I hope you guys can see all of that okay. But the final thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna very carefully scoot some of this stuff out of the way. I haven't domed these either yet. So these will take even a third pour, even though they're tiny, because some of these will float to the top and then the doming won't be smooth. 
and so I need to wait until this part cures and then it'll only take a tiny bit of resin to dome those. But the last thing I'm going to show you guys is how to do flowers and resin in one of these. This one is a bale that already has the tray and there are a few different things you can do. I did one here that's almost done and I stuck an actual flower in with the resin and what I'm going to do is just cut around the edges of this flower so the petals sticking out won't be there and so it's kind of a cool look that you've got a real flower but it stops at your edges and I'll dome that. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want the video to be too long. The other thing is you can mix different designs. I thought this was the cutest. It was in the clearance section at Michael's the other day so it was 20 cents and I got it and I thought how cute to do one little bird in these and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on top and trace around and then just cut out my shape and stick it in there and after I do that I'll pour resin and then I'm going to put a few flowers around the edges so that I have that bird focal point but I have real flowers in there too. So just a note on this, this is really thick cardstock, so I'm not going to worry about it with this one. But if you're doing paper and you don't want the color to get very much darker than it is, I don't mind because I'm going to use a light bird and, and the wet resin will darken this paper. But you can definitely use like a Mod Podge or something and cover your paper first so that when you pour your resin it doesn't get the paper wet and make it a darker color. One other trick with these, these bales, I don't know if you can see it on edge, they stick out further than the top and the bottom of the disc. And so if I lay it like this and pour, I'm going to end up with it being uneven and the resin wanting to pour out the bottom. So all I do, because you know I like to recycle all my stuff, I find one of my little pour cups and I just set it right on top and the bale is sticking out the top and not pushing everything so that it's not quite right. So I just do that first and then pour it. Again, these flowers are going to float so I don't want to dome this yet because it will not be even. So this will just be a quick pour a little clear on top once I get to that point. But that's kind of how this all works you guys. We'll let this cure and I will show you the last little bits tomorrow and how I add bales to all of these that don't already have them and we'll be finished. Alright guys, let's finish this up. I'm going to show you how to add bales and things to these and I'm going to dome a couple more pieces. Now listen, I'm impatient and I pulled most of these out without you because I wanted to see them. But I worked really hard and left one in so that you can see how they pop out. So these are done and they just pop right out. Ooh. And that one is a pretty yellow and blue. So I'm going to show you guys next, since you already have seen me dome a few of these, I will dome these later, but I'm going to show you how I do the back real quick. I went to the dollar store and bought this set of paintbrushes for a dollar. These are super cheap, but they're one time use because I'm going to actually dip them into my resin and then paint them onto the back like I said earlier so that this will be really nice and clear and shiny. So let me mix my resin and we will finish this up. Alright, my resin is mixed and as I said before, I'm going to paint the back of this and I'm also going to be sure to touch the metal just because if anyone has any kind of allergy to metal, 
this will keep the metal from touching their skin. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to dome the rest of these. I'll speed this up and then I will show you guys how I add all of the parts to make these into necklaces. show you guys is how to finish these. I have a couple different ways I'm going to show you. This is a little bale that I got at Michael's. They come in four packs. And then I also have just these little eye hook screws and they're teeny teeny tiny. And what I'm going to be using is my drill and my 3 64 inch drill bit. It's super tiny and I've got it down in there far enough that if I, and I've got it down the, in there far enough that when I drill, if I go all the way to the end of my drill here, that's the right length. So I won't accidentally drill too far into my piece. So I'm going to show you two different ways that I like to do these. I'll use this first one that we just pulled out because it's so pretty. And um, this one has lots of little flowers at the top, so I don't want to cover those up with a bale. So for this one, I'm going to drill down into the top. One thing you have to watch is because this has a slight concave shape to it, because that's just how the resin cures, you don't want to drill too close to the back because if you think you're in the middle, you might actually get too close to the back and come out down here somewhere. So I'm going to do that one first, and I'll show you how I put the screw in. And drill slowly so you don't mess anything up accidentally. All right, so then I'm going to use one of these little screw bales and I just screw it right in. But you see how I've got a big white cloudy spot here because when I drill and it loosens the resin in there, it leaves it all white and powdery. What I'm going to do is dip my screw into my resin first and then put it in so that I get rid of that white cloudiness. I'm going to drill a little farther real quick. There we go. All right, so I'm going to dip that in. And I'm just with my fingers going to screw it in there. If that's hard to do, you can definitely use a little pair of pliers or something to screw it into if it's too hard to just do it with your fingers. I grab my pliers just for the end of this to make sure it's in all the way. You don't have to add resin at this point, but I just feel like it gives it gives your bale just a nice tighter tighter feel to it so that you don't have to worry about it ever coming out. So that's how I do one of them. Now the other kind that I really like to do is if I have a spot that's really clear, like I did with this one, I'm going to actually use this bale and I'm going to go through the top of it and I'll show you how I do that. We're going to use the drill again, but I'm going to go straight down into it. And you'll notice I'm drilling right on my desk. I'm not drilling into my desk. I get the hole most of the way through and then I flip it over just because I want to make sure it's going in evenly and lining up so I don't have to worry in this instance about my drill going all the way through. But if you're drilling bigger holes, make sure you put a little piece of wood or something underneath so you don't drill into your surface top. There. 
So now I have a hole going all the way through. And this one doesn't matter quite as much with putting the resin in so that you don't see that hole because the hole's gonna be covered. But I still dab a little bit with that same paintbrush because I wanna make sure that once this bale's in there, it's not gonna fall out. So I've bent it open. I'm gonna use that little paintbrush and just paint the tiniest bit of resin right onto each of these. And then I do the front first, stick it in, flip over and aim the back, just like that. And what I'll do is very gently just clamp and line it up so I know exactly where I want it because the resin will cure. And I have another finished one. And I really like how those look. So I'm going to leave these sitting to cure. They won't take long. And then just show you guys one other thing I did. This wasn't in the description, but I bought these little tiny pieces of wood and I drilled holes into them and I turned them into necklaces. And I really like that idea. And maybe we'll do a tutorial sometime, but I just wanted to show you how that looks. I think that turned out cool. I did the exact same thing I did with these where I put tape in the bottom, but it's in an actual piece of wood. So uh, I did this one, but if I, I guess, get up the energy for it, maybe I'll cut holes in all of them and start making a bunch. I just thought it was a neat look. The next thing I'm gonna do is show you just the easiest part. I purchased 100 necklaces on Amazon. And they were really inexpensive, which was great. It was about $14 or so for a pack of 100. And they're really cute. They've got two cords and a ribbon. And they came in like eight different colors. And they've got the adjustable size right here of the clasp. And so I bought a bunch of those because I'm going to make a whole bunch of these and then do one of my craft shows with them. So with this type that we just did, you literally have a necklace ready once you slide this through. These are quick and easy. I used to try to make my own necklaces um, with buying the different parts and then adding the backs and everything and it just, for me, was taking so long that it wasn't worth it. But, let me get this together here. Obviously these aren't super expensive necklaces but the quality is really good and I will link you guys to that in the description but look at that, isn't that pretty? There is the finished necklace. And it looks so nice. The flowers turn out beautifully. The bale makes it look really elegant. And the shape of the um, mold even looks really cool. So that's one of the finished necklaces. Now these are different for different people and depending on what you use. But let me grab another one that I put a tiny bale in. So I had done this one. Well, we'll use the one we just did because I want you to be able to see a different color. Um, with this one, the necklaces I purchased don't fit through this hole. And so all I have to do is with my pliers, bend this out a tiny bit, slide the necklace in, and then bend it back together. And most of this is yellow, but if you can see, I've got that tiny little spray of blue flowers in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a blue. I think that's gonna look really pretty to tie the colors in together. So again, this is hard to see you guys because it's tiny, sorry about that, but I'm just opening that bale a tiny bit, like that. And I'm gonna slide the necklace in. Just like that. And then I'll bend this back. One trick on this is you don't want to just try to clamp right away because that can make your bale just turn and kind of mess up how it's stuck in there. So you want to grab it the way you did pulling it out and push it back into position. And at the very end, you can just squeeze a tiny bit to clamp that last little bit down so the necklace can't fall out. Oop, I gotta get a good hold of it. There. All right, so there we go. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. This is the quickest way and the most quality way I have found to do dried flowers and resin. Obviously you can do these in giant molds too. You could make coasters with big flowers or you could get the big um, geode looking molds or rock molds and um, it's just a fun, fun little project to do all kinds of colors and after two walks I've got enough flowers that I can do all the necklaces I'm going to do for all my craft shows and things like that. So hope you have fun and I will see you guys next time. And one other quick tip for these is if you get resin on this and you're afraid it's going to drip or it's going to have too much, this is a $2 silicone scrub brush. I got a pack of two of these at, um, at Big Lots. And if you're afraid you're going to get a drip or even with any of your jewelry, if you're afraid something's going to drip, 
I let them dry on this because if it drips, it drips into the silicone and it doesn't stay against your piece. And then you just bend your silicone and the drip pops right out. So those are just a nice quick tip. For watching, I appreciate it very much. I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. It was a lot of fun to make. Please remember that you can find me on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest as the Frugal Resinista. And I hope you all have a great day. Bye!